Thank you this morning for bringing us into your presence to speak to our hearts, to bless us, to impart into our lives your very word, the very message that you have for us. We pray that you will continue to do more for us in Jesus' name, that you will reign in us, sovereign Lord, and not only reign in us, but you will cause us to reign over every circumstances that want to prevail over us in Jesus name. We want to thank you God for bringing us this far in this year. We want to thank you God because you're going to see us through even to the rest of the year. We appreciate you for you have been faithful. In Jesus precious name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're marching on. This morning we're looking at the subject keeping the faith and fighting the good fight of faith in adversity. Keeping the faith and fighting the good fight of faith in adversity or through adversity. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. Proverbs 24, I read from verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, Thy strength is what? Is small. The Bible is expecting us to be strong at all times, even in adversity. The Bible is encouraging us to be strong even in the face of adversity. The Bible says here, if that's a conditional statement, if thou faint. And so here the Bible is not expecting you to faint. God is not expecting you to faint or falter. But the Bible is saying here, if for any reason you faint in the day of adversity, it's basically because your strength is small. 
And this morning I declare to you this day that your strength will not be small in Jesus' name. Your strength will be big. Your strength will be great. Your strength will be mighty. Now turn to your neighbor and say, your strength will be mighty. Your strength will not be small. In Jesus' name. You know, last week we considered uh, spiritual maturity. And uh, I shared with us that, you know, when things happen to us, they reflect the level of our maturity based on our response to those things. And I talked about the case of Paul saying that, look, I've been through many things, yet I continue in the faith. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. He said, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant. In stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft, often, of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often in perils of water, in perils of robber, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the hidden, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And he said in verse 28 of Second Corinthians 11, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the churches. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Paul saying that I have been through many things. I have been through adversity, yet I continue steadfastly. Somebody here is going to continue steadfastly. You will continue in the faith. You will not fail in adversity. Your strength will not be small in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God allows us to go through adversity at times to reveal our true values and allegiances. Your true values, where your values are, what your treasures are, can be revealed when you go through adversity. They reveal the believer's spiritual maturity level. Look at Acts 5, 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Acts 5, 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than who? Than men. In your life, you obey God rather than men in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to say, in my life, I will obey God rather than men. Galatians 1.10 tells us, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Of Christ. Brethren, adversities, challenges, troubles, difficult times, trials, temptations, they help to do many things in our lives. They help to strip us of pretense. They help to strip us of self delusion. They help to strip us of, you know, of all the extra baggages that we carry that we think are spirituality. They help to reveal our faith level, the extent of your faith in God. You know, we can't talk of victory without battles. We can't talk of God being able to deliver us without the fiery furnace. We can't talk of God being able to part the Red Sea without a Red Sea or without Pharaoh pursuing us. We can't talk of, you know, victory without temptations and trials. 
And so when these things come, they help to reveal who we are. Are we able to stand? Proverbs 24, 10 says, if you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. And I declare to you, your strength will not be small in the name of Jesus Christ again. Adversities help to reorder or help us to reorder our priorities in life. Maybe your priority is not doing the will of God and being who God wants you to be. But then adversity comes and then you simply realize that I need more of God in my life. I need his presence in my life. Where are all the people? All the, I can't see all, my, all the people I thought were supporting me and all that. But then where is God? And God says, I'm here with you. Others may forsake you, but I will not forsake you. It helps to reveal, you know, to reorder, to refocus us, even in trials, in difficulties, in trying times. You know, when we talk of victory, it can sound theoretical, and it is theoretical until you go through persecutions, until you go through trials. You, it's just a talk, victory. You can talk of victory talk. You can talk of God is able. But how do we know God is able until... You're what? Confronted with your challenges. It is abstract. It sounds abstract. God is, cap God is able until you get into, you go through the valley of the shadow of death. And then there, where fear was supposed to be, your faith comes alive. Your faith becomes stronger. That though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There is a catalog of people who encounter challenging times during the course of their walk with God. And we can look at Hebrews chapter 11. There are many, many of them. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, everybody. For by it, the elders did what? obtained a good a good report you will obtain a good report you will obtain a good report for this year you will obtain a good report for this month in the name of jesus christ verse three everybody through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear it's in that difficult time that you Understand who created the world. It's through that difficult time that, you know, the reality of God is impressed in your life. And you forget about what people out there may be saying. The false prophets may be teaching. The unbelievers saying, where is that God? But God shows up for you. You say, this God is alive. This God is able to deliver. This God created the whole world, including me. And I can see how he's recreating my situation. Where people are saying there's a casting down, I can see how God is lifting me up. Where people say there's no way, I can see how God is making a way where there's no way for me. How he is making, causing water, rivers to flow in the desert for me. Parting my own Red Sea. This God is alive. And then your testimony is formed. It's created in the midst of that adversity. Somebody here, God is going to give you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. James 1, 2 through 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. It worketh patience. You know, whatever the adversity may be, you must keep your faith. You must walk with God. You must not renounce God. Do not compromise. Adversity helps the believer to appreciate his or her faith in God. You know, when you look at that word faith, that's what we're considering. Keeping the faith and fighting the good fight, the fight of faith in adversity. There are times you, have, you keep the faith. At all times, you must keep the faith. But there are also times that you say, okay, there's a need to fight the fight of faith here. There's a need to contend with everything contending against me. There's a need for me 
to become violent. When I say violent, I'm not talking about you going out there and looking for somebody to hit. Violent against the devil, violent against the kingdom of darkness, walking against your progress. And that you size up. Praise the Lord. As I praise the Lord. When we look at that word faith, faith appears about 231 times from Deuteronomy chapter 32, or sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20, to Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. About 231 times. That means that word faith is very, very dear. It's very, very important. When the word faith is used in scriptures, it is used with varying meanings. The Bible talks about saving faith. Saving faith. Everybody says saving faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2. We look at verse 8. Ephesians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through what? Faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of who? The gift of God. The gift of God. You know, when you find yourself in adversity, it's then you understand that salvation is a gift from God. It's then you get to the reality, down, it downs on you that you are saved not of your own works, but it is the gift of God. You're saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works. You find yourself that it is God helping you through. You said, not of works. I cannot boast. Look, humanly speaking, I would have been consumed by this situation. Humanly speaking, I would have failed and failed over and over and over. But I see this saving faith, the faith that, bring, that brought salvation to my life. I see that same saving faith seeing me through, bringing salvation for me, where there would have been death, where there would have been failure, God saves me. God will save you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so as we talk about this word faith, keeping the faith, if you don't have God in you, if you have not experienced this saving faith, if you have not come to the point of salvation, of accepting Jesus into your heart, as your Lord and Savior, then you will not be able to succeed through adversities. You will not be able to stand. You will not be able to make it without God helping you. You need that God in you. You need Jesus coming into you and making you, know, making you his child and becoming your Lord and Savior so that when the challenges of life come, he stands by you, he sees you through. And God will see you through in the name of Jesus Christ. It is when we are going through adversity, we understand the meaning of faith. That, you know, faith is required for faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. Faith is required for fidelity. Fidelity. You know, now that you're challenged, the, 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 uh, there is a challenge to compromise. There is a temptation to, 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 to you know, compromise your faith, to, to compromise and cooperate with the kingdom of darkness. There is a temptation to switch over the side where you are to, to get to, to do things the way God, you know, God does not want you to do, to, to displease God. And to, to offend God, the temptation is there, the trial is there, and it's pleasant for you to sin against God. But then you understand that faith needs to come alive. Because the Bible says in Galatians 5.22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. There's faith right there. as one of the fruit of the Spirit. And then you say, I'm a child of God. There has to be faith in my life. I'm a child of God. I have to manifest faith in this circumstance. I'm not going to yield to temptation. You will not yield to temptation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The word faith also means the gift of faith. You know, many times we, we talk about the gift of faith to do extraordinary things. Why well, you can't talk about the gift of faith without adversity. It's in that circumstance, that adversity, that you begin to appreciate the gift of faith. That 
God has given you the gift of faith to manifest extraordinary faith, to turn things around in your favor, to turn things around for your family, to turn things around in your career, in your walk with God. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 says, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of what? Knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit and perhaps the situation is requiring that you manifest that faith and then you say well if i'm going to survive if i'm going to see my uh, get through this situation if i'm going to remain in the faith then i must manifest the gift of faith then i must speak the word of faith then i must declare the declarations of faith then i must declare and decree and when you decree, it shall be established unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And a miracle occurs. A miracle will take place in your life. I say a miracle will take place in your life in Jesus' name. We see that the faith which is, we're talking about here is the collection or totality of the teachings and doctrines of a scripture. A collection or totality of the teachings of the doctrines of the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Ephesians 4 verse 13 the bible says here till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man you become perfect in your life i say you will become perfect in your life you will become perfect in your walk with god in the name of jesus christ he says and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man a perfect woman unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Praise the Lord. First Timothy 4 verse 1 tells us, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You know, when your faith is set, you know, segmented and settled in the word of God, you will not give heed to seducing spirits. Where your faith is strong in the Lord, you will not depart from the faith. You will not be tossed by every doctrine of the devil that is out there. It says, now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Lord is warning us that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Sagittarian spirit telling them there is no God. Sagittarian spirit telling them you don't need a Bible in your life. Sagittarian spirit telling them that, look, it's okay for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman. Sagittarian spirit telling them there's no need for a man to marry a woman. Sagittarian spirit telling them, look, 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 you don't need prayers in your life anymore. And we can tell that when we don't have God in our life, things turn upside down. We can tell that when we take God away from our schools, then the guns are blazing. We need God. Can somebody say, we need God? We need God. I want you to say, I need God in my life. I need God in my family. We need God in this country. And we need more of God in our church. And there will be more of God's presence for us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It says, now the Spirit speaketh express. Now, the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. That's why it's necessary, it's important for you to be strong in faith. That's why it's important for you not to be weak. It says, if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And what makes your, str your strength to be great, what makes you strong, is your faith. Your faith in God. The faith our faith is so fundamental to our Christian life and ministry that we must believe every component of it with our whole heart and live out the same in all situations and circumstances that we find ourselves. You know, brethren, there will be powers and principalities fighting against us. You know, brethren, the devil will war against you. He will not leave you alone. And he will, that's, that's his business. The past and principalities will not leave the believer alone. They will not go to sleep. And they will not allow the believer to live an easy life. And of course, they will try to divert your attention from heaven. They will try to dissuade you to, to come over to their side. 
That is why we must be ready for a continuous battle. You will fight the good fight of faith as well. We have the promises of God. We have the examples of our Lord Jesus Christ and the companionship of the Holy Ghost to aid us and give us victory at all times. And to the very end, not only of our lives, but even of this month, even of this year, in Jesus' name. We look at the very first point, believing the faith. Believing the faith. I will believe the faith. I, don't, I didn't hear you very well. I am a believer of the faith. I will believe the word of God. Believing the faith. If we're going to be strong in times of adversity and challenges, there's a need for you and me to believe the faith. Mark chapter 1 verse 15. Mark 1 15. The Bible says here, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. The gospel brings salvation. The gospel brings deliverance from sin. The gospel brings deliverance from the works of darkness. The gospel brings deliverance from the powers and principalities organized by Satan. It says, repent ye and believe the gospel. If you're going to be strong in the day of adversity, there's a need for you to repent of your sins. Turn away from wickedness and turn to who? Turn to who? You turn to God. You come over to the Lord's side. Believe the gospel. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. The word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. God's word will work in you. It will work wonders in your life. It will work wonders in your family. It will work wonders in your career. It will work wonders all around for you in Jesus' name. Here talking about the believers receiving the word with faith, with thankfulness. They were happy to have the word of God. Acts 4 verse 19 and 20. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. When we believe the faith, we will not yield to the pressures of people, or pressures of men to reject God in our lives. To compromise the faith. Here Peter and John said, Tell us whether it be right in the sight of God for us to hearken unto you or hearken unto God. Tell me, you and God, who is more important? God is more important. You, know, you should know that. It says, We will not but, or for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. To the many Christians, they're silenced. They are quiet. They cannot preach the gospel because of the ordinances of men. The ordinances walking against God, walking against righteousness. You can talk about anything. You can talk about Halloween. You can talk about uh, any other thing but not the gospel. You will not be silenced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will not be silenced in the mighty say I will not be silenced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you're going to have a voice, if you're going to maintain your voice, your strength, then there's a need for you to do what? To believe the faith. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 says, "And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be Strong and shall do what? They shall do what? Exploit. You will do exploit in Jesus' name. A believer's steadfastness and stability in the Lord are dependent on a firm grasp and confidence in the truth revealed in the Bible. 
in a world of terror as we are in, in which we're in, and deceit engineered by Satan and his host, we need to be well grounded in the truth in order to frontally attack every lie of Satan and to keep the faith. The early, of course, uh, we talk of character and talk of conviction. All those are, you know, demonstrated. All those are strong where there is a strong faith. You know, as believers, the Lord is encouraging you and me to keep the faith to the end, like Paul and others who demonstrated that strength, even in adversity. Every believer needs to constantly ask himself this question. Do I still believe every doctrine as revealed by the Holy Scriptures? Do I still believe the Word of God as God wants me to? Do I have faith in the Word of God? You need to ask yourself that question because you may be riding on the assumptions and presumptions of yesterday. Because we're in the world, we're not of the world. The devil is infusing, in injecting things into people strange doctrines you know strange things idolatry into the church worldliness into the church uh, injecting things and believers are not conscious believers need to ask themselves this question do i still believe god's word concerning dressing do i still believe god's word concerning that marriage is between a man and a woman do i still believe god's word because the bible makes us to know that friendship with the world is what enmity against who against god so you every day every moment you should be asking yourself do i still believe the word of god do i still believe i'm i'm, I'm a christian am i still a christian am i still in the faith and do i believe the things that god put in his word concerning me do i still believe the precepts of, of scriptures concerning giving do i still believe righteousness and holiness do i still believe you know if you know, some people and some preachers will make people to despise god's word because of the failures in their life because they are unable to keep up with the expectations of god and expectations of righteousness and because they are failing they will tell people look god understands God doesn't understand anything. He understands what he understands is that you be obedient to his word. He understands righteousness. He understands that you believe in even unto the end of the world. And I pray that God will strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. As I pray that God will strengthen you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You know, the question again I ask you is, do you still believe? Every doctrine as revealed in God's word. Our belief in the faith will result in the following actions. Number one, it will result in life. It will result in living faith for you, in your life. You, your faith comes more alive. Living faith, of course, you live for faith. You live by faith. Your faith comes alive in various situations that you go through. Let's look at Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. The outcome of believing the faith. Matthew 28, verse 19. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. The Bible says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you even unto the end of the world amen teaching them to observe now when you believe the faith the faith is alive in you you leave the faith you teach others to leave the faith praise the lord another of course outcome of believing the faith is it prepares you and makes you ready to suffer for the faith it makes you ready to suffer for the faith for keeping the faith and you, you know you're able to stand in the day of adversity. Another outcome of believing the faith is, you know, it enables you to be able to contend for the faith. I will contend for the faith. Jude verse three. Jude 
verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly do what? Earnestly do what, believers? Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The Lord will help you. And the Lord will help the church will contend for the faith that was delivered unto the saints of God in Jesus' name. We look at the second point. The battle of faith in adversity. The battle of faith in adversity. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21. Now there's a battle going on and many don't know it. The battle for your survival. The battle for God to remain in our schools. The battle to have God's presence remain in our, in our church. The battle to have God's presence remain in our family. The battle to still carry on the presence of God in us. The battle continues to rage. But many people are sleeping. Many people are so tired that they cannot even pray. Many people are not watchful. And the devil is sifting them as wheat. The devil will not sift you as wheat. In Jesus' name. What Bible pass, uh, verse, the, uh, chapter did I talk about? Bible book? 1 Kings chapter what? 18 verse 21. We're going to read together. Let's read together after the count of two. Can we read everybody? And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, do what? Follow him. But if Baal, Baal then do what? Follow him. And the people did what? Answered him not a word. They couldn't answer him a word because there was, it was battle for battle. It was a battle that was raging on right there. There was contention between right there, not just the prophets of Baal against Elijah. It was a battle between the kingdom of, of God against the kingdom of darkness. And Elijah representing the kingdom of God the prophets of Baal representing who? I'm not getting all the... Uh, the prophets of Baal represented the kingdom of who? And Elijah representing the kingdom of? And here were the masses. We're here were the people halting between two opinions. It was battle for battle. Prophets of Baal on one hand, Elijah on the other hand. If Elijah fails in the day of adversity... His strength is small, and many will be destroyed. But Elijah must stand strong. Elijah must contend for God. Elijah said, he came to them and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. But we know the story very well that Elijah stood for God. And in that battle, Elijah was victorious. You will be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The expressions of the Bible constantly reminds us of the fact that as believers, we are engaged in a combat, engaged in a fight. This can all be summarized in, or summarized as the battle of faith. The moment a sinner repents, the devil is mad. He's enraged and he wants to do his worst to ensure the faith of such is overthrown at any stage of the Christian life. You know, whatever it will take, the devil is never tired. He's ready to do. He doesn't give up. And that's why 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18 tells us that who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. The devil wants to overthrow the faith of believers. Once overthrow your faith, but he will not succeed in Jesus' name. That's why the Bible did not leave us alone in the dark as to what we should do, you know, as we run the Christian race. And this morning, I want to encourage you as a believer that you don't go to sleep. You watch and pray so that you don't enter into temptations. The flesh may be weak, but the spirit needs to be, to be strong. That's the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength 
is small. I will not fail. I will not fail. I will not fail. Say in the name of Jesus. I will not fail. I will not falter. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every believer must be aggressive. Everybody say aggressive. Brutal. And possess a never friendly attitude with the devil. Nor his wiles. Every believer. Say every believer. Must be aggressive. And say I will be aggressive. I will be brutal. Against the kingdom of darkness. You know Matthew eleven twelve 12 tells us that. And from the days. Of John the Baptist. Until now. The kingdom of heaven suffereth. And the violent do what? They take it by force. They take it by force. You will take it by force. You will preserve your faith by force. You will take your inheritance by force. You will keep your Christian walk. In, you will keep your Christian faith by force in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holiness, righteousness will be your portion. You will not give in. In Jesus' name. Every believer must be a wrestler. Every believer must be combatant. Every believer must fight against the, you know, of course, not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities. Every believer must be a soldier, a warrior. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, be what? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. Verse 12, everybody. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, everybody. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having all, done all to you, to stand. Verse 14, everybody, let's read out. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. 15, everybody, and your feet shod with the preparation of a gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench or the fiery that of the wicked. Turn to your neighbor and say, quench. In the name of Jesus, you will quench every fiery death of the wicked. Say it like you mean it to them. In the name of Jesus, are you talking to somebody? Are you talking to somebody? Say, in the name of Jesus, you are going to quench every fiery death of the wicked. You will quench them all. In Jesus' name. You will quench them all. Without losing anyone. All the arrows of the devil. You will neutralize them. You will turn them back to the sender. Back to the sender. Back to the sender. In the name of Jesus. You know, as we talk about this, we're not talking... I started by reading to us, so you don't misconstrue me. It says that... We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So when I say back to the sender, I am not talking about you. I mean, you go into your place of work, and then your boss told you that you came late to work, and I need you to be punctual. Really, this business is not going to continue doing well if you keep coming with this attitude of lateness, and you say back to the sender. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about lateness to work talking about laziness and not walking, doing things that you're supposed to do, being dedicated to, your, to God and being dedicated to your family. I'm not talking about that right here. We're talking about the walks of darkness. We're talking about the wiles you know, of the devil that want to, you know, to prevent you from making heaven. We're talking about the, the spirits that walk, spirit, trying to make you to disbelieve God. God says this. And the devil comes and says, did God really say this? 
Why not just do this and God will understand. We're talking about those spirits from pit of hell that want to subvert your faith. And you say, I will quench you all in the name of Jesus. Every power, satanic power, satanic uh, administration. Perhaps they've set, up, they've set up an office. Already they've set up an office in your family. And they've set up an office in your heart. And the devil is right there administering instructions. You say, every administration of the kingdom of darkness, I disband them in the mighty name of Jesus. You say, I quench you all. I put you out of business in Jesus' name. And then you pray that prayer, and then you go about your daily activities. You find yourself finding, finding favor with God and finding favor with man. You know, you're not before your enemies. I, you tell you, I bind. You know, you already settled that, and you're going to settle that here today. The business of this year is not settled until God says it is settled. And we have declared that this month is our month of what, everybody? Our month of thanksgiving. God will give you a testimony. I say God will give you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Testimony is coming your way. He says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints for all saints a believer must be a contender competing challenging running a race asserting himself or herself against the kingdom of darkness you must not be passive when it's time to speak for god speak out don't be quiet perhaps if elijah was quiet then the prophets of baal have the day they get the day free ride for the kingdom of darkness but elijah refused to be what to be quiet he spoke out. He said, if God be God, let's follow God. Look, why hold you between two opinions? God has been good to us. If you keep quiet, then the devil has, gets a free day, a free ride. And he will not get a free day over this church in Jesus' name. Every believer must be a fighter, fighting the good fight of faith. We see that in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And every believer must be praying without ceasing but with watchfulness. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 26, verse 41, he says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is what? The flesh is weak. So even Jesus is saying here that I, see, you are, you're still a human being. You're still a man. You are in the flesh. And he said, watch and pray for that reason, because your spirit can be willing, but your flesh can be what? Your flesh can be weak. But I pray that you will be strong in the faith. In Jesus' name. Every believer must preach in spite of persecution. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 17 makes us to know that. We look at the last point. Beholding the author and finisher of our faith in adversity. Please turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12. I read... From verse 2. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Do you have your Bible? Do you have your Bible open? Hebrews 12, verse 2. Let's rise up on our feet. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read together. Hebrews 12. Everybody rise up on your feet as we read together. Hebrews 12, from verse 2. Make sure you're carrying your Bible, not your cell phone. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Are we there, everybody? We read verse 2, everybody. To verse, we read verse 2 to verse 6. Can we read? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom 
he receive it. Now you're going to turn to your neighbor and say, turn to your neighbor, make sure you have a neighbor. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endure the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Do not forget the exhortations from the word of God. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. And I want to let you know this. Do not faint. When you are rebuked of the Lord, when you are going through adversity, because God loves you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth, and every son whom he receiveth, you will endure the chastening of the Lord, because God loves you. Praise the Lord. There is a song that says, there is no mountain we cannot climb. When I say we, I mean Jesus and I. Chorus says, we're going to project it. Yes, I, I need not worry. There is no mountain. We cannot climb. Sing it like you mean. There is no mountain. Say, I cannot climb. I cannot climb. When I say we, I mean Jesus and I. Because I have Jesus. I need not walk. Like a minute, there, there is, is no mountain that I, we can't climb. When, when I, I say we, I mean Jesus and I, cause I have Jesus, I need not go. to your neighbor and say we're not going to leave you in the valley you are not going to remain in the valley you and I we are going to climb our mountain and when I say we I mean Jesus and us when I thought I was the only one fighting all the battle I suddenly saw the footprint of God and the fingerprint of God in my life and I see the angels of God from heaven coming down, bringing messages and answers, delivering miracle to me. We're going to sing that song again. And you will sing to your neighbor because you're going to sing faith. Because I may be speaking to somebody here who is already being swayed around and is thinking of departing from the faith. And the person is, can I still continue in the faith? I mean, I love Deeper Life Bible Church. I love everything that's been taught here. But can I still continue in the faith? You will continue in the faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And perhaps there's somebody out there that is promising you this and that. You promising you this and that as a man or as a woman. And But you, see, you're going to, as we sing faith into you, you'll say to yourself, oh, look, I have the promises of God. I don't the promises of man. I have God and I'm satisfied. When I say we, I mean Jesus and I. Are you ready? Do you mean it? Do you mean it? Because we're talking about keeping the faith, believing the faith. Because at times we sing, you know, at times we talk, but it must come alive in you. It must come alive in you when you're going through adversity, your family and your good challenges. 
it must come alive in every circumstance, in every component of your life. Jesus and I sing it like you mean it. There is Bring no God here today. Open your mouth and begin to bless God here today because he has already given you victory over every mountain and adversity. Open your mouth and just bless God. Open your mouth and bless God. Open your mouth and bless God. Bless him for the victory. Bless him for bringing you to the saving faith. Bless him for bringing you to the point of salvation. Thank him for coming into your heart and becoming your Lord and Savior. And you will be here this morning. You have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus is calling you today. If you have Jesus, there's no mountain that you cannot climb. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to take your life. You don't have to go through depression. You don't have to manage your situations by yourself. If you have Jesus, you need not worry. If you have Jesus, you will climb that mountain. Everything will become well for you. The lines will fall onto you in pleasant places. If you have Jesus, it is all settled. If you have Jesus, you need not worry. Not worry about what man may do or say. Or worry what, about what people are saying about you. Jesus said, Whom do, what do men say? Who do men say that I am? Yeah, men can say, but it doesn't change who I am. I am the Son of God. I am Jesus, the author and the finisher of the faith. You need not worry what people are talking about, uh, your, how people are despising your God, how the prophets of Baal are despising the name of God. If you have Jesus, you need not worry. There's no mountain that you cannot climb. If you have Jesus, you will climb that mountain. You will climb that mountain. When I say Jesus, when I say we, I mean Jesus and I. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Lord of lords. Thank you, ancient of days. Paul continued steadfastly. Despite all that he went through, Paul continued. And heroes of faith, they are referred to as heroes of faith because their faith was manifested. They did not fail in the day of adversity, and I will not fail. I will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus because God, heaven is waiting for those that overcome. Those who overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the words of their testimony. Heaven is waiting for them. We do not have an enduring city. Everything that we see is temporal. Don't get carried away by the walls and the wiles of the devil. I mean, the doctrines, the false doctrines out there. 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For they, those that do know their God, shall be strong and they shall do exploits. You will do exploits. Don't worry. You are climbing that mountain. Don't worry. The mountain is being leveled. Don't worry. You're possessing that mountain. You're possessing your health. You're possessing your children. You're possessing your joy. You're possessing your peace. You're possessing your inheritance. Because you have Jesus, you need not worry. No mountain that you cannot climb. And as we speak, we can see the end of a year victory for Jesus. We can see the victory of Jesus for the church this year. In the month of November, we can see victory of the victory of Jesus for us. Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. There's no mountain that you cannot climb. Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. There's no mountain that you cannot climb. Youths, children, there's no mountain that you cannot climb. You just believe in Jesus. Believe in all that he did for you. Believe him with your heart. Have faith in God. Trust him. Let him be your Lord and Savior. Allow him. Give him room in your heart. Uh, there's no mountain that you cannot climb. There's no mountain that you cannot climb. And the Lord will give you victory. The Lord will give you victory. That saving faith that brought you to the point of salvation will save you in every circumstance as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, that faith is required for faithfulness, for you to be faithful even in the lion's den, for you to be faithful even in the very four days. The three Hebrew children were faithful unto God. We will not deny God. We're not going to deny God. Even if it means we dying in this situation, we are not going to compromise our faith. And God showed up. We, Nebuchadnezzar said, I see a fourth man. I see a fourth man like unto the Son of God. There is no mountain. When I say we, I mean Jesus and I. Don't think your family is isolated. God in you, God in your family, uh, is, I'm telling you, is what you need. He is with you even unto the ends of the world. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Don't take drastic decisions. Don't take irrational decisions. Because God is with you. He wants to guide you into all truth. Don't take decisions based on the dictates of people out there. Don't take the counsel of men. I want you to look at the word of God. What is the God saying to you? What is the word of God declaring to you? What is the instruction coming from God for you? Don't listen to those soothsayers out there. Don't listen to those false teachers out there. Don't listen to those false preachers out there. Don't listen to those people. They want to usurp your faith. In the name of Jesus, I will not fail in the day of adversity. I will be strong in the Lord. I will do exploits in the name of Jesus. Where will the testimony come from if you fail? Where will the testimony be if you compromise? Where is the testimony we're talking about if you give in to temptations and trials? Do you know that each victory, each adversity becomes, it's like a fire drill for adversities to come in the future. You overcome this one, it's like you're being drilled right now. But there are greater battles, greater challenges ahead. If you go through the drilling, and you succeed in this drilling right now what you're going through then you are stronger to face the greater battles that are ahead you are stronger to face the greater battles that are ahead in the mighty name of jesus if you don't have jesus the devil will make a mess of your life haven't you seen husbands deserting their wife haven't you seen their fathers deserting their family because of adversity they cannot contend they cannot stand they cannot they can endure then they, they abandon the family don't you see mothers abandoning their family but i said to you here today if you have jesus he will never abandon you he will not abandon you parents may forsake you but he will not forsake you in the name of jesus you need not worry that's why you don't need to have hypertension you don't need to have anxiety there shouldn't be anxiety and worries in your life just go to sleep just go to sleep because the one that keeps israel neither sleeps nor slumber that god is awake 24 7 that god is alive 24 7 that god is on the throne 24 7 that god is ready to respond to your situations 24 7 maybe he's just allowing you 
the opportunity to flex your muscles, your spiritual muscles. God wants to know where you stand. Why halt between two opinions? He is just trying to allow you to see. Is your loyalty to him or to the world? Is your loyalty to God or to your father? Is your loyalty to God or to your mother? Is your loyalty to God or to your children? Is your loyalty to God or to your employer? And your employer is saying, hey, maybe you are a, a nurse and you are being told to do that which is against the will of God. Serve alcohol. You have been told uh, to do things that are not the will of God at your place of work. To cut corners at your place of work. To, to cross T's and put the dots on eyes at your place of work. To compromise your faith. And you say, I don't care even if I lose this job. I don't care. You take the whole world. All I need is Jesus. If one door closes, this God is able to open many, 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 many doors. Many, many, many doors in the mighty name of Jesus. When I say him, I mean, we, I mean Jesus and I. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We exalt your holy name. Because that's why we come into your presence, oh God, Sunday after Sunday, Monday after Monday, Friday after Friday, to encourage ourselves in the Christian walk, to encourage ourselves in the faith. And you said, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves as the manner of some is. And Lord God, we know we're stronger when we're together in the faith. We're stronger when we're united with the people of God. We're stronger when we acknowledge your presence in our midst. And I'm not going to stay away from fellowship. I'm not going to miss any moment. I would rather come into the sanctuary of praise in the sanctuary where God is. I am not going to stay away from the people of God. Do you know? When you hear a voice telling you, stay away from the fellowship, stay away from church, stay away, don't, just stay away. It's the voice of Satan. The Lord said, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. In the, in the, in the, in the fellowship, you're stronger. In fellowship, you're mightier. You get a defy. You get the power to face your battles and challenges when nobody's there with you because God is with us. We bless God here this morning. We thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Have you written your own ticket with God? Have you written your own ticket with God? Hannah wrote her own ticket with God. This month of November is a month of thanksgiving. God is giving you a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will rejoice. You will celebrate the goodness of God. At the end of this year, you will count your blessings. You will not even be able to name them because there will be so much in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You've obtained favor with God. You will also obtain favor with man. Because of heaven's connection, God will cause men to favor you. I pray right now for divine connection. You are here, you want to get to expected destination, but I don't see any bridge. There is nothing, no physical bridge to take me from where I am to where I need to be. God is going to give you a bridge in the name of Jesus Christ. That bridge is your faith. Your faith will take you through the Red Sea in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, uh -uh. maybe it's the walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho has kept you from your inheritance. The walls of Jericho are coming down flat. Month of thanksgiving, every wall of Jericho with decree will come down flat in the name of Jesus Christ. I am going higher. I am going higher. I am going higher. My family is going higher. My children are going higher. This church is going higher. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Somebody give God praise, give God praise, give God praise. Give God praise, give God praise, give God praise. Give him all the glory and give him all the honor here today. Give him all the adoration here today. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know.